Hey, Steve from Guitar Zoom here. And uh, today what I thought would be kind of fun is to try and help you a little bit if you're struggling with how to play chords and strum at the same time. Now I've been teaching uh, a long time and I've had a lot of students when they first start learning how to play, of course, one of the number one reasons why you start learning how to play guitar is because be you want to play songs that you enjoy, right? I mean, you grew up listening to music and there's some music that you want to learn how to play. And of course that leads to all sorts of different things. But the first step is, is that we've got to put these two elements, chords and strumming together to be able to play songs. And oftentimes, certainly in my case, you know, I struggle with that because the first thing I learned how to do was play some chords. And, you know, then I learned how to play like a strumming pattern or something like that. And then as I, as I progressed, I started realizing that everything that I played sounded very much the same all the time because I had learned how to play like one strumming pattern that I played to everything that I did. And it took a while to sort of, uh, sort of break that apart. So when I teach guitar lessons, one of the things that I teach people is that if you think about hypothetically here, if you think about the two parts or two halves of your brain, one half is more creative and the other half tends to be a bit more analytical. Chords, playing a D chord or a G chord or a C chord or something like that, those are pretty straightforward. I mean, they're, they're pretty black and white. If you learn how to play a D chord, this is a D chord. Now, yes, as you keep going, there's many different ways to play a D and all those sorts of things, but this is a D chord. Strumming, on the other hand, isn't quite as analytical, okay? It's more creative because if you learn how to play like a strumming pattern, for instance, and you play that, that same strumming pattern for five minutes in a song, it's gonna get old after a while. It's gonna get old for you and it's gonna get old for anybody who's listening to you. So songs really aren't based off just a strumming pattern all the way through, some are but many aren't. Oftentimes, if you think about it in your head, if you met someone like, you know, Bob Dylan and you said, hey, how do you strum to, you know, times are changing or something like that? He probably would look at you and go, I have no idea. I just kind of play, right? So what I want to explain to you in two videos, this video is going to focus on strumming. And then I'm actually going to put some links uh, in the description of some other YouTube videos that I've got that can take this even further if you're interested. And then the second video is going to focus more on developing your chords so we can actually get these two pieces to come together and start making some music. Okay. So the first step is, is that if we break down strumming, okay, just strumming, what we're going to do is we're going to completely bypass talking about chords. And like if I have a guitar class or something like that and I'm teaching people how to play and they've never played guitar before, the first thing I teach them is not how to play a G chord or something like that because over the week they don't really feel like they've made much progress. You know, it's, it's hard on the fingers and, you know, it doesn't really sound right and all that sort of thing. And listen, we all go through it. But if I teach them how to do a technique I call scratching, they can turn on the radio and play, they can you know, put on a playlist that they like or a CD or whatever the case may be, and they can try and play along. And that's what I wanna show you is how scratching works, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our hand and we're gonna lay it across, we're gonna lay all four fingers across the six strings. Now it doesn't matter where, the, the, the most important thing is, is that you're not pressing on the strings, you're just lightly touching them. So that way when you strum, you get this sound. Now, if for some reason you don't know how to hold a guitar pick or just basic elements like that, I've got a playlist that um, has a whole how to play guitar thing that you can, you can study. Um, so there's all kinds of different information over there if there's something that you're missing as I'm discussing, okay? So we go back to this. So I'm touching all the strings and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strum downward. So let's say I'm listening to the radio or I'm listening to a song that I like. I always tell people, instead of starting off worrying about, you know, quarter notes and eighth notes and sixteenth notes and all these different things, which are important, don't get me wrong. But instead of starting off our conversation as a beginning guitar player there, let's just talk about where you would tap your foot or where you would, you know, nod your head to a, a song or something like that. If we start there, at least it gives us somewhere where our body is feeling the rhythm to a song. So we're listening to a song and we find ourselves doing this. Okay, that's where we are. Okay, well, let's start off then by scratching to that song, trying to learn to keep our timing with the song that we're listening to. So we're not focusing on chord changes and all these different things. We're taking that out of the, out of the equation entirely and we're just going to focus on strumming. Okay. Now, when I teach strumming, I always teach people to think about movement of your arm, not as, you know, a hammer where you're just, you're, you're putting all your energy behind the push of that hammer. 
strumming is more like playing a maraca, where it's always a back and forth motion as you're playing, right? So if you've ever played a maraca or something like that before, you want to keep the, the, the beads or whatever is in a maraca, you want to keep those moving. So as we strum, we want to keep this moving. Now, if I was moving my head here, right? This is where I'm at. That's where I'm going to put my downs. Let's say the song was maybe a little bit faster. Let's say I found a song and it was doing, um, you know, whatever. Let's just say the, the tempo was here. And we felt that that's where the beat is. Now, tempo and all those things, there, there's some elements of subject, subjectiveness, excuse me, in terms of where we think that that down strum should be. And it comes with time. And again, in some of the videos that I'm going to link below, you're going to be able to, to learn a little bit more about this. But what we're talking about now isn't perfection. We're just talking about trying to learn to feel where we think that beat should be, where we, we you know, snap our fingers or move our head or tap our foot or whatever the, might, the, the case might be. So as I'm listening to this song, I hear it here. That's where I hear it. Okay, so that's where I put these. And now for the next three minutes or four minutes or whatever, what I'm trying to do is line up to the tempo or the, the speed of that song as it's going by. Then maybe I choose something else, okay? Now, once you've figured out where those downs are going to go, what you have to understand is in between every down that you ever play is an optional upstrum. So if you know anything about music theory, you'd know that, for instance, a quarter note would be here and an eighth note would be twice as fast. So for guitar players, we shift to that eighth note feel. And again, if you don't know what those are, don't worry. But if we shift to that eighth note feel, we do that by adding the ups in between. So instead of our downs just being here, which is fine, we start adding the ups. And that's where the maraca thing starts happening is you have this down and up motion of the guitar pick of your arm moving from the elbow, of course, just real relaxed. Okay. And we just get that going. So now we've got these downs that we can play to the song, whatever it is we're studying. And we've got these down ups that we can add as well. Okay. So as I'm listening to the song, maybe what you could do is you could start making a little exercise by maybe playing some downs and then playing some down ups. So maybe you do this. And then, and then, and then. And again, there doesn't have to be an exact science to how many you're doing. I'm just saying what you wanna get used to is feeling the downs and then the down up strums and understanding that from the, the arms perspective, nothing is changing. When you strum those downs, it feels exactly the same way as when you strum the downs and the ups. Okay, the same motion is happening. So that way when you're playing, anytime you choose to add an upstroke or an upstrum in between those downs, it's a very natural thing. Where if you're doing this, you can notice it becomes very erratic, right? Now, again, there's no 100% in music. Nothing is absolute. There's always different things that we'll wind up doing. But if this is new for you, or you've always struggled with rhythm, this is a great place to start, just to start learning how this feels. Now, let's say we took a song like um, this. So I like to use this one as an exercise because when I play that song for people and I say, okay, what I want you to do is snap your fingers or move your head or tap your foot or whatever it is you need to do to this song. And you'll see that some people in the group or in the class will do this. And some people will be doing this. And again, neither one is wrong. It's just your perception of where you think that beat is, right? So sometimes when, when you're listening, if you were thinking here, your downs would go here, which means your ups would go in between. Now, if you were thinking twice as fast, if it felt like it was double time, then your downs would go here and your ups would go in between there. 
Now, needless to say, as we go faster, it gets more difficult and it requires more practice and more time and that sort of thing, which is fine. That's why you're learning how to play guitar, right? But let me explain this to you. And then again, I'll, I'll link some other videos that might be able to help you a little bit further. But if you think about the way we strum a guitar, we, we can only strum downward and upward. Those are the two choices that we have. So if we put our downs here, which means our ups are gonna go here. That's fine. But that also means that we've expended both of our downs and our ups. We don't have anywhere else to go. We can't add any more energy by playing faster if we choose to. We've gotta be okay with the song being. And that's okay. For me, it doesn't feel fast enough. Okay, so if you, again, if you know your theory, this would be like thinking quarter note to eighth note to 16th note. That's kind of what we're thinking about. If that doesn't make sense to you, let me explain it a different way. So if you think about it, if I put my downs here, which means my ups go here, and now I've used all my downs and ups, I have nothing left, okay? If it still doesn't feel like you're moving fast enough, what you can do is take all the downs and all the ups and put them all as down strums. Instead of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, you play down, 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 down. You've just shifted what you were doing. You're still moving the same speed, but instead of playing it down, up, down, up, down, up, down, you're playing down, 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 right? So what that does is it frees up your up strum so you can add these. which feels a little more like the song to me. So if I do this. Okay, so, so far we've talked about how we listen to a song and we try and figure out where we would snap our fingers or, you know, bob our head or whatever the case may be. And that's where we're gonna put those downs. And we just practice that for a while, learning to feel the down strum to various songs that we like. Certainly try and find something that is moderate in speed. You know, don't, don't try and choose something crazy to begin with. You can work into crazy, but start with something normal. Um, and don't try and choose something that's in, you know, seven, eight time or 15, 16 or something in the beginning. As you keep going, do whatever you want. The more power to you, right? But in the beginning, if this is something new to you, try and start with something that makes sense that would be fairly easy for you to connect to. So you find those downs. Then you start exploring up strums in between those down strums, okay? And right now we're just doing simple things like playing some downs. Then we're playing a group of down ups. And then we're playing a group of downs. Just kind of trying to get used to that. Okay, the next topic, which is a little bit weird for people is, how do we deal with differences in feel? And if you, again, quarter note, eighth note versus eighth to 16th note, right? So if you put your downs here and your ups are here and it doesn't feel fast enough, you can convert all of these to downs, which then gives you down ups in between. Now, of course, when you do that, it becomes a little more difficult to practice, right? Because um, it's just faster, right? So that's where we are so far. Now I'm gonna give you one other thing to think about a little bit here, and then this will lead to the other videos that you can watch, because I've done quite a number of different videos on this topic. But where I went wrong, especially when I first started teaching guitar classes back when I was like, I don't even know, 16, 17, something like that. I started teaching a guitar class at one of the local music stores. And um, I would teach, I, I made my own book and all this sort of thing, and I had some guitar strums in there, right? So I was teaching people how to go, or whatever it might be. And then we would play songs and we would use that strum. And that's fine. And sometimes we need those strumming patterns. Don't get me wrong. Strumming patterns can be a very beneficial thing. The problem that I found as we continued on with subsequent guitar classes is these, because I didn't know any better. I hadn't been teaching very long and as I was teaching these students, what I started realizing is they were always doing the same strumming patterns for every song that they'd play. So it can become a trap learning how to play strums, like a strumming pattern. I'm not saying that it might not be beneficial. Learning how to play a strumming pattern can certainly help. But at some point, what you wanna start learning how to do is break out of strumming patterns and just start exploring all of the various mathematical options that you have. Let's say, for instance, I have this. 
So my strumming pattern would tell me to do this, for instance, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, and that's okay. Okay, so I start trying to play that strum for a song and it's working really great, but maybe I find that I'm playing that strum for everything, right? What I try and teach people how to do is once you get the idea of the downs and then adding the ups in between the downs and that whole thing, and you practice a number of times. Again, my rule is always practice on the days that you eat, okay? So if you eat that day, you should practice a little bit that day. And as you're practicing, I, I call it brainless, and I don't mean this in a negative uh, context. What I mean is, as you're playing, what I want you to start trying to do is instead of trying to plan a strumming pattern, you try and turn your brain off and you simply start trying to hit and miss the strings at different times. And eventually what will happen is you'll start becoming aware and deciding when you want to hit the strings or when you want to miss them. But that's way different than just playing a strumming pattern. Let me show you what I mean. So if I put all my downs and ups in right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move away from the strings like this. But notice how I'm still strumming. I'm just not hitting the strings. So then what I'm going to do is come back in and then move away and come back in and move away and come back in. So you see, I can miss more strings or more strums, excuse me, and create more space, or I can strum more and create less space. But what I what I try and teach people is in the beginning, don't worry about whether it's consistent, because oftentimes with songs, the strum is never truly consistent anyways when it comes to this sort of strumming. Again, if you're doing, you know, different kinds of music or something, sure, of course it becomes more consistent. But with strumming, some songs will have a strumming pattern. Some songs won't, or at least they'll start with a strumming pattern, but along the way, the song will just kind of do whatever. So they'll be playing off of a strum idea. You know, if you listen to um, Take It Easy by the Eagles, right? And it's going like this. That's the basic idea of the strum to that song, but it's not like it stays that way for the entire song and they never strum anything else. That's not true at all. It, it does change throughout the song, but that's the basic premise of the strum. So you see, we want to learn to really feel strumming, use that one side of our brain, the creative side, to start learning how strumming works to music, and then start learning how to get creative with that strumming. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some tips on how to practice just chords and work on chords, okay? And then hopefully what we can do is we can start having these two things come together. But again, in my opinion, if, if this is where you are in your guitar playing, practicing scratching on a daily basis, okay? Don't try and shove chords and strumming together if they're not ready, because then you just wind up getting confused or you're, you, what you're trying to play sounds very, you know, um, pre-programmed, right? So it, it takes a little while. So practicing learning how to feel rhythm, learning how to strum to music and feel something that, that makes sense, right? And in the, the, the things I'll, I'll, I'll link below, I talk about dynamics and what I call ocean strumming and all kinds of different things like that that you can learn that really can benefit you with your rhythm. But practicing those things on a daily basis is really gonna benefit your ability to strum. Then we'll look at the chords and develop a, a, a practice regimen with chords. And then that you can do every day as well and then slowly start merging these two things together. So if this video helped you, do me a favor, uh, subscribe to the channel, like and share the video and um, and again, most importantly, stay positive, stay inspired, and keep practicing. So I'll talk to you soon.